inflammaging. Do you know what that is? Let's talk about it. Researchers and other experts in the field of aging are talking more about the role that inflammaging plays in health as we age. It appears that even the normal aging process is accompanied by chronic and low-grade inflammation and is associated with many age-related diseases and disorders, including arthritis, cancer, atherosclerosis, and even hypertension. Neurodegenerative disorders are also linked to age-related inflammation and include Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, for instance. Inflammation also contributes to an increased risk of death, especially among elderly people. Inflammaging, what is it? While experts agree that chronic inflammation co-occurs with aging, the exact origins of it and its potential causative role in causing adverse health outcomes is still fundamentally unknown. What is known, though, is that aging is a complicated process that is influenced by random environmental, genetic, and other factors that affect cells, tissues, and organs throughout life. Individuals who are exposed to certain types of irritants, like pollution or chemicals, may be particularly vulnerable to this type of inflammation. Almost every age-related disorder is associated with inflammaging or inflammation that occurs throughout the aging process. Now, we could break this down into two different types of inflammation, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Inflammation can be, um, it can be described as an acute, short-lived immune response to harmful conditions like invading pathogens, infection, or tissue injury. That's acute inflammation. Inflammation in this sense then facilitates repair and adaptation of tissues. That's a good thing. As people age though, this process can become impaired, leading to increased susceptibility to infection. And it's true across every piece of literature I've ever read, as we age, we become more vulnerable to all types, all sorts of infections. Generally speaking, then, older adults and seniors are at a higher risk for more negative and severe health outcomes also due to infection. Now, on the other hand, chronic inflammation still maintains many features of acute inflammation, except that it is of low grade or simmering throughout our life course, if you will, and persistent, leading to tissue degeneration. Tissues can only be inflamed for so long. Therefore, many aged tissues show no sign of infection, but they are in a state of chronic inflammation. Certain lifestyle behaviors might put individuals at a higher risk of chronic inflammation, including smoking, the overuse of alcohol, obesity, and chronic stress. Yes, stress can inflame you everywhere. Symptoms of chronic inflammation, because that's the one that is so important here. Chronic inflammation is inflammaging. At times, chronic inflammation is noticeable and the individual may experience symptoms like pain, swelling, discoloration of tissue, with usually a redness or a red hue to it. Other symptoms of chronic illness include abdominal or chest pain, fatigue, fever, rashes, and mouth sores. Here's some possible interventions. Despite the ongoing process of chronic inflammation with age, there are things that can be done to reduce, suppress, or minimize its effects. A good example is the use of statins or low doses of aspirin for cardiovascular health. I'm sure you've heard of that one. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen can relieve pain and discomfort, but long-term use, bad, it's not recommended due to the risk of stomach ulcers. I think I read somewhere that NSAIDs are the leading cause of bleeding 
stomach ulcers in the United States. Uh, corticosteroids might also be helpful. Now, when it comes to inflammation, inflammaging, so on and so forth, nutrition matters. Nutrition matters. Good nutrition that reduces or controls weight can lower the risk of diseases caused by inflammation, as obesity is highly associated with chronic inflammation. There are plenty of foods rich in antioxidants and polyphenols, uh, which are known uh, to have anti-inflammatory effects. One is red wine, which I love, being a, a sommelier. Although I, I've been really, really liking white burgundies as well, but reds are healthier for you. Fruits like berries, oranges, and cherries are very high in antioxidants. Leafy greens are also healthy to consume, as is salmon, olive oil, tomatoes, nuts, chocolate, coffee, tea, beer, red wine, as I said are all natural anti-inflammatory uh, inflammatory foods and beverages. I like the last few, chocolate, coffee, tea, beer, red wine. They're five food groups. Supplements and uh, spices might be able to help you as well. There are many supplements that can reduce inflammation. My favorite, curcumin and turmeric. Fish oil, which isn't my favorite. And uh, uh, lipoic a uh, acid can be very effective when taken routinely. A number of spices that people have in their kitchen right now can reduce inflammation associated with age. Garlic, ginger, and cayenne. The heat factor. Hot foods tend to be healthy in a number of ways. Gut health. Man, I've been on a gut health rant for some time now. Paying attention to good gut health through the restoration of gut integrity and youthful microbiota is another way to slow chronic inflammation. Foods to avoid for better gut health include processed meats, bacon and hot dogs and kielbasa and sausage, my favorites, and red meats, fried foods, and refined carbohydrates. Reduce those. Uh, food to eat more of include yogurt, sauerkraut, broccoli, asparagus, soybean, carrots, onions, artichokes, grass-fed meat, apples, grapefruit, kiwi, sunflower, olive oils, and almond butter. Those are gut-friendly foods, especially sauerkraut, broccoli. This is going to sound gross, but they live in your gut longer, and they ferment, and that fermentation process uh, feeds your, your, your microbes in your gut, and it leads to better gut health. Here are my final thoughts. Aging and inflammation equals inflammaging. It's, it's natural and will occur as we get older. While it's associated with almost every known age-related disease or disorder, there are lots of ways to reduce inflammation, inflammaging, and live a longer, healthier life. So this has been Inflammaging and What It Means to You. I'm Dr. Jim Collins. You mean a lot to me. Thanks for coming back over and over again. Please share this with a friend or a colleague and take good care of yourself. I'll see you soon. Go.